Hey there, uh, welcome back. So last time we talked about the parts of a script, um, and today we're going to be talking about variables. So we're still not doing too much inside Unity right now. Uh, we're just looking at what makes Unity run the way it should, which are the scripts. So I'm going to open up my intro script that I started last time, and I'm going to be using some things that are called debug statements in order to demonstrate what variables are. So debug statements are things that you use when you're trying to debug. It's a statement that you insert into the code to see exactly where it is or what it's doing as a way to kind of peek underneath the hood. Uh, we're going to be using those debug statements today to just as a way to display information back to the user. So uh, I've got my intro script here. Um, I've got my float, which is floaty. So instead, the first type of variable I'm going to talk about is something called a string variable. So a string variable is something that is letters and numbers, and uh, it does not automatically assign value to those numbers unless you do some conversions to it. So for example, you could have a string, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and that string doesn't necessarily do anything um, or even know what those numbers are to the string. It's just characters. So let me give you an example here. So in my do stuff here, I'm going to declare a string. So let's say, don't want caps on. I'm going to declare a string, and I'm going to call it, um, let's call it game. And I'm going to set this string equal to, uh, in, parent or in quotations, half-life. All right, so half-life here is the name of our string game. In Visual Studio, when you assign a variable but never use it, you automatically get this little red squiggly underneath it. So don't worry, we'll fix that in just a second. So to display this, I'm going to use my debug statement, like I said. And the type of debug statement I'm going to use is a log. So I'm going to call it by typing in debug and then dot. And the dot allows me to have access to anything that's part of the debug um, uh, command line. So the one I'm using right now is log. And then open close parentheses. Now inside these open close parentheses I can have it uh, print out just game and that gets rid of the two underlines. So what's going to happen now is when I call this do stuff method I'm going to see a little message in my uh, console that just says whatever game is. And it's not going to say the word game, it's going to say what game is stored as, because game is a variable. I could change this from Half-Life to anything else. I could make it State of Decay, I could make it um, Puyo Pop, whatever. Now, um, this method alone doesn't do anything. It needs to be called from somewhere. So I'm going to call it from the start method, just to give you a demonstration of what the start method does. So if I call and do stuff, and again, when I made the method, I had to have these open close parentheses. I'll have to have those as well when I call it because I'm calling a method and I'm not just doing something to a variable and then uh, semicolon to end my thought. So when the program starts up, it's going to call do stuff. It's going to do all the stuff that's in here and then it's going to move on. So I'm going to save my script. I'm going to pop back into Unity here. And this intro script right now it's not attached to anything that's in the actual scene, so it, that start method is never going to get called because it's never started because it's not in the scene. So I'm going to create here just an empty game object. And this game object, for right now, is going to serve just as a script holder. And I'm going to call this um, game manager. We're going to do a lot more with that soon. Now I'm going to pull my intro script onto that which means that the intro script is now a part of my scene because it's now attached to my game manager. Uh, if I hit play here and wait just a second for it to play, down here in my debug area you can see it says Half-Life. Also, if you switch over to console, you can see that it says Half-Life and that it's coming from a Unity Engine debug.log. Alright, now if I wanted to change the name 
of this game, I could go back into my script itself and change the name of the game. So instead of being Half-Life, I could physically change this. However, there's something else I can do. By declaring this variable inside of this method, I've made it what's known as local, meaning it can only be called from inside this method. If I were to try to do something with game here, like let's say I wanted to say game equals, see it won't even let me because it wants to change it to game object, game equals um, state of decay. Uh, I get this red squiggly underneath it, and the reason I get this red squiggly is because I'm calling a variable that didn't exist in the current context, meaning this variable here only exists inside of do stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this variable public. So you don't have to put your public, your global variables up here, um, but it's I don't know, it's kind of good practices to do so. Keep all of your global variables in one spot. By putting the variable outside of a method, I'm making it global, meaning it can be accessed by any method. So I'm going to say uh, string game equals half-life. And now this, um, this game can be accessed from anywhere. It'll also tell me here that I'm trying to, um, by redefining string game as this, down here, I'm I'm hiding it, meaning I'm kind of overwriting it. So I'm just going to get rid of this line down here. All right, so if I save my script, I have my string here. If I jump back into Unity and hit play, I'll see that Half-Life display down here in the console again. Uh, I think I hit play. I did. OK. And there it is being called from a debug.log statement. Now. This is going to be different if I call this do stuff from the update method. So I'm going to delete this from start, and I'm going to instead call it from update. By calling it from update, instead of being called once when the program begins, it's going to be called every frame of the game. And the game is probably running at, you know, 60 to 100 frames per second since there's nothing in there. So I'm going to see a whole bunch of them right away. So if I hit play here, you can see that I've already got 200 some half-life messages. And that's because every single, um, it's called an update tick. Every single time that the frames that are seen are updated, this method gets called, which is in itself calling do stuff. So this is going to be called again and again and again and again. Let me go out of play mode here before I get that too many. See, even just that small amount of time, I had 510 of those, which means that there were 510 frames. Now, the other thing with variables is right now, this variable is what's called private. Meaning if I go into Unity and look at my script, I cannot see game anywhere. But if I change it and add a modifier on the front, public, that is now a string that can be modified in the editor. So if I go back into Unity and let that compile for a second down here, then um, it'll pop up with game. So I'm going to change this from Half-Life to Puyo Pop. And now the script initially has a default value for game that's Half-Life, but in the editor, I'm overriding that default value with this new one. So now if I hit play, I should see Puyo Pop. And I'm still calling it from the update method, so I'm seeing it like a million times. So let me cut that from there, put it back in the start method, so I'm only seeing it once. Now, a string is just one type of variable. I can have many others. For example, I can have an integer value. So I'm going to make a public integer value um, and call it number of copies. So this way of writing a variable here, where I start with a lowercase letter, and then every number I add to it is uppercase, this is called um, Pascal case. And it's used for variables to allow it, like to just to make it easier to actually read the variable. So your mind is automatically, as soon as it sees this capital letter, going to think that this is another word. And this way, we're creating something that has many words in it, but is all one word. 
Um, it's usually typical to do this for um, variables. Start with a lowercase letter, and then each additional um, each additional word begins with an uppercase letter. Now, when I did this do stuff here, I started with an uppercase letter and another upper, uppercase letter every time I added a new word. This is called camel case. Um, this is to be used when you're doing methods. Uh, methods are kind of like a higher order from variables, so uh, they always begin with a capital letter. Similar to classes. Classes and methods should be in camel case and um, variables, things that can change, should be in Pascal case. So I have the integer for number of copies and I'm going to create another kind of variable here. I'm going to call this a float and the float is going to be price. And I'm going to again give this a default value of 11.5. Okay. Um, and Unity, when you're declaring a variable, C sharp by default thinks variables are something called a double. And Unity doesn't really use doubles though, so you want to always make sure that you're declaring your decimal values as floats. Otherwise, Unity, or not Unity, C sharp will assume it's a double. Okay. Um, and there's one more type of variable I want to show you guys today, and that's called a Boolean value. Uh, it's named after mathematician George Boole. Uh, Boolean values are either true or false, but not both. So I'm going to make a public bool display info. I'm going to default that to false. Um, okay, so this display info is something that's either true or false. And you can use Boolean values as kind of a gate mechanism to only access certain parts of a program if something is true or only access certain parts if something is false. So I'm going to change my do stuff here. I'm going to make it a little more robust. So rather than just displaying game, I'm going to pass in a string into this as well. So I'm going to say uh, the game and then put a space. And now I can add extra variables onto here by, outside of the quotation marks, adding a plus. So I'm going to add game, and then another plus to say that I'm adding more stuff to this. Uh, quotation marks, space, costs, space. And then I'm going to add to it the price dollars uh, and then let's do four let's go even more um, number of copies and then I'm going to just kind of end it there um, do, 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 what did I do wrong here the game plus game costs oh I forgot to add a plus symbol here Okay, so now it should tell us the name of the game, the cost, and that cost is for how many copies. So I'm going to pop back into Unity here. You should see a few more variables show up. So, okay, so I got my number of copies. I'm going to say 2, and I'm going to change my price too. I'm going to say that my price is 20.50. Now, note I don't have to add the F here uh, because Unity knows it's using it as a float. And my display info is a Boolean. I can make it true or false. I'm not doing anything with that right now, um, but I can change it to be true or false. I'll leave it false for now. So if I hit play, I can see that do stuff says the game Puyo Pop costs 20.5. It concatenates that variable. I entered it as 20.50. It shortened that variable down. Um, for two, and then I should have added copies. So let's add that for two plus copies, and then periods end the sentence. All right, so if I go back in here now, hit play, um, I should see my little sentence show up using my variables. 
So the game preview pop costs $20.5 for two copies. Now, note that if I change my number of copies now, while the game's in play mode, nothing happens to this, because that method is only being called at the very, very start, right when I hit play. Well, slightly after I hit play, but indistinguishable from right when I hit play. Uh, however, if I go out of play mode here, it reverts back to what it was. I can change it to, say, 5 now, and make this 100. And if I hit play, I should be able to see it uh, now changed. But again, if I change it now, so make this 8 while I'm in play mode, if I go out of play mode, it switches back to what it was, 5. All right, so that's kind of a brief overview on variables. Um, we talked about four different kinds of variables. We talked about strings, integers, floats, and Boolean values. Um, those are the main basic variable types. There's a bunch more different types of variables that you can use in, in Unity, but these are the main variable types that are going to exist in pretty much any coding language. Um, we talked about the difference between public and private variables. We talked about camel case versus Pascal case for variables versus methods. And we talked about how the start and the update method are used in Unity, how those two differentiate from one another. Uh, so next time, we're going to talk about um, assignment uh, operators and um, equivalence operators and exactly what those are used for. So um, if you learned anything, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. Uh, you can give me a thumbs up even if you didn't learn anything. You can leave any questions in the comments down below. And I also down below have a link to my Discord server. So you can stop by and ask me questions there if you like. Uh, other than that, uh, have yourself a wonderful day. And I hope things are going well wherever you are.